Ah, it feels good to be back on the horse, baby. How's it going folks and welcome back to TRF. My goal on this channel is to help you guys catch more bass and become better bass anglers. So if you want to become a better bass angler, you are going to love this channel. Now, I love of course doing the instructional videos, but one thing that I do every so often is a little challenge, a little fishing challenge, and uh, I try to incorporate as much real fishing into it as possible. So it's not a barbie rod challenge, it's not a Walmart challenge, this is a fishing challenge, a hardcore, you know, tournament centered bass fishing challenge. And so what I'm going to be doing today is fishing 100 boat docks here in Texas in the summer. Hopefully the fish are on the boat docks and the goal is to catch a five bass limit by fishing just 100 boat docks counting every single one and showing you guys me fishing every single one of these boat docks. So if you missed my last 100 docks video, I think I did that uh, last summer in Minnesota and I'll do it a few times in the next few months. But I'm so excited. We're gonna strap the chest mount on, put the camera right here and we'll see you guys up at the front deck for dock number one. So the gear that we're gonna be using for today's dock fishing expedition is my classic dock skipping combo. I got an outcast tackle cage fighter jig. I have the brand new lose skipping and pitching reel. I have not even used this thing yet. So I'm gonna take the first dock very slow and make sure I get it right. And then we got a few other jigs, soft plastics, wacky rig that are ready to go in case the jig doesn't get this fish to fire, but I feel like it will. This is a, uh, a, a mainstay for me. But I do not wanna mess up this reel. So I gotta figure out how this works. Dock number one. No way. No, I got stuck. Of course I did, there we go. Be hard to skip, no, okay. After like seven skips, I'm like, no. Three quarter ounce jig is not the deal. Okay, now we got a five eighths ounce jig. Well, that skip wasn't much better, but it feels better. Now, as we round dock number one, probably a good time to talk about why docks hold fish. You know, there's a lot of things that, that, that largemouth bass, and I'm, I've even caught smallmouth bass and spotted bass off docks as well. Uh, there's a lot of things those fish can hold on and call their home and where they want to reside. But a dock is just really, really convenient for them. If they're shallow, living shallow, they don't really have to go very far to live. They can, they can live underneath this dock. They can swing out and eat something out deep real quick and then come back to the dock. Uh, because docks are in residential areas, they usually have boats, ski boats, wakeboard boats, pleasure boats. And so due to that, docks are almost always within close proximity to deep water or deeper water than the bank. So it's a good little area for a bass to have everything it needs in one location. Docks also hold the whole ecosystem. So they have algae growing on the dock posts, which bring in the bluegill and the smaller fish and the forage, which then bring in the bass to eat those. So docks, marinas, all those things are usually great for catching bass. And uh, I just know that in most lakes, like I said, we're not in a tournament today, but I'm just kind of treating it like a tournament. If you commit all day to skipping docks in a one day tournament, you can probably do pretty well. So that's what we're hoping to do here. Just catch five, man. Even if it takes us 100 docks, we're gonna catch five. This post has some fish on it. Nothing on dock number two. Dock number three, nothing. That's a good start to dock four. Now as we approach dock number five here, uh, I do have a video on how to skip your lures underneath docks and really underneath anything that's hanging over the water. So if you are at about, well, I was about to say if you're impressed by my skills. I'm not showing my skills yet. It takes a while to get into the skipping groove. But if you want to learn how to skip, I've made a really cool video on that that I'll leave linked below. But when it comes to, you know, fishing docks, some docks have long walkways, some docks have no walkways at all. Some docks have tons of cover, some are, you know, basically see-through grates, so there's not really a whole lot of sun protection. And so you really have to fish every portion of the first docks you fish, from the super shallow to the super deep to find, you know, what area those fish are sitting on. And then most likely the fish will be sitting on those on the rest of the docks that you fish. So we have yet to secure a bite at all which means that I've still got to uh, fish everything. Once I get one bite, it'll be at least a really good guess as to where the rest of these fish will be. Oh gosh, I got hammered. I got hammered, hammered. 
I should not have set the hook. I should have felt if that fish was there. <laughs> it was probably a bluegill. A bite on dock five, but no fish in the boat. Ah, dock six, nothing. Dock number seven, no fish. Nothing on dock number eight. Dock nine, it was not very fine. That is dock number 10. And let me tell you something right now, guys. I'm hot, my camera's hot. Oh, it's already like 90 degrees and it's like 8.30 in the morning. Oh, it's so hot. Take a quick break with the big camera and just go chesty so that camera here can rest. But I don't know if I can do 100 docks today. That'd be a lot. Oh, we're gonna have to see if I can even survive that long out here. Well, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. This stinks. Well, for dock number 20, we have no fish. What we should do, should we stay here? Should we give up all together? I just figured we would've gotten some bass bites by now. Throw in at least, you know, Thunder Cricket, Wacky Rig, and Jig. I got an idea. We are close to another lake that I know has bass to be willing to bite on docks. So we're gonna pack all this shindig up and we'll see you guys at lake number two. Let's get out there and get started on dock 21. So this lake that we are at now is a much smaller lake. Uh, definitely has more fish in it. I've caught tons of fish here uh, in my lifetime, but the fish are not as big. The reason I came here is because, like I said, it was close and I just wanna get some fish for you guys. So we're gonna start at dock number 21. The water here is a little bit dingier than I'm used to, but it's still about, you know, two to three foot visibility, pretty dang clear. So we're gonna stick mostly with the wacky rig, especially with it being noon and it's like 92 outside. So any fish that are still shallow are probably not gonna want the jig, but we still might mix it up. So let's hop in the front and get to fishing. Nothing on 22. 23, oh gosh, oh. I was just saying 23 looking juicy and I had a fish. Gosh dang it. Wow, that took it out of my hands. All right, see if he's still in there. Probably gonna be nothing on 23. <sighs> 24, nothing. Come on. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> I did not even see that guy. That's how sneaky those herons are, or crane. I don't know if there's a heron or a crane. I think, folks, this will be my last cast of the challenge, I know. We're gonna go deep. I've got a spot where I, I feel like even in the summertime, the fish should still be, they should be grouped up out there on a worm and a, a jig and a thunder cricket. So, you know what? Docks were not the move today. I guess I thought, you know, because I catch them on docks in Minnesota in the summer, that I'd catch them on docks in Texas in the summer, but not everything is applicable to uh, the two different parts of the country. Just some things. So, we, uh, we gave it our all. We got more opportunities for 100 docks later on. I just want to catch some fish for you guys. So let's head deep and see what we can do. There's one, there's a big one. That's 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 a big one. Maybe. Yeah, it's a nice one. He's barely hooked. She's 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 barely hooked. Yes. <laughs> Finally. Just had to come to my old spot. Just had to come to the old spot. Thank you, buddy. Four pounder. See ya. There's one. Got him. Flipping some grass, just like we do in Minnesota. Very cool. <laughs> I saw a little patch of grass out there on live scope, so I gave it the old flip. 
shook it around and he ate the little stealth fighter jig. Bring it in here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They're on the grass. <sighs> what a strong fighting fish. Thank you, friend. Alrighty. This is what you do in the summertime, folks. You find deeper stuff. This is in 10 feet of water, little grass edge, grass clumps, shaking my jig around. Another one, same exact little hole. Look at that, two in a row. Two in a row. That, my friends, is what you call a scrape. Oh no, oh no, where'd you go? Ah, I'm falling over. You gonna flop out of the boat for me? There you go. Flip in deep grass, you always wanna get your bait, whether it's a jig or a worm, back in there. Cause just like that, it was bang bang. Got him. That was cool. Holy cow. That was cool. Saw that fish literally chase it down on live scope. Bring it in. Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. That was really, really cool. Bringing a little bit of Minnesota down to Texas. I knew you could do what I'm doing right now in Texas. I knew you could do it, and I've proved it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go, baby. And what's crazy there is that everybody down south thinks you have to make super long casts up to the fish so your boat doesn't spook them. I caught that fish underneath the trolling motor. I just caused that fish to react by ripping my jig off the bottom. Oh, it's good. That's cool to do what I do in Minnesota down here in Texas. Classic summertime patterns, man. They work everywhere. Besides docks. I guess docks didn't work today, but if fish are out deep on grass, they're going to always be out deep on grass. No matter where you are in the country, if you're in Texas and New York, it don't matter. A few more flips here, folks, and we're, uh, we're going to call it a day. I am tired, and sweat is pouring out of every hole in my body, so it just feels uncomfortable, you know? I got what I came for. I caught some fish. Challenge didn't go well. Challenge went pretty poor, actually. But you know what? We've got more chances to do the 100 Dock Challenge this summer. Probably not here in Texas. I do know one lake that we could do it at, but uh, it's a little bit too far of a drive for the schedule I have right now. So uh, let's call this our last cast right here. Clear my spool. Come on, give me a scrape. Find me a scrape of fish right at the last second. And if y'all are curious about what I'm doing with this uh, jig and this technique and kind of shaking it down there, I have tons of videos on that on my channel. I'll link one or two of them below, as well as tons coming this summer because it's one of the most fun ways to catch fish. Oh, nope, grass up in Minnesota. So if y'all enjoyed, hit the gosh dang subscribe button. I love making videos to help you guys catch more fish. And if today didn't really help you catch more fish, then I apologize. At least I proved that the fish were out deep and they were not on the docks. So you got the entertaining factor of me skipping 40 years odd docks and then the teaching of going out deep and catching some fish. So thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see you next time out here on TRF.